Hi. So, um, if you're watching a recording of this, we had a catastrophe where my previous link to my live, the mic was no longer working. So everybody got kicked off the last link. And so now we're just gonna give people some time as they are hopping back on to the new link. And I'm gonna, yay, I'm happy. So, oh, technology. So I'm just gonna hop on my social media and edit the links that I had posted earlier. And then as people hop on and find this video, we're gonna get started. I hope people can find this video. Okay. Um, so. It's such a bummer because vibrations that are coming in for today's transmission are so delightful. And so I hope that people are going to be able to catch this. Um, I know that we had 50 people on live just a minute ago. And so I do want to give those people an opportunity to hop on here. Um, oh, technology. Oops. So, maybe I should. Okay, so I'm just deleting the previous stream so people don't get confused. And then I'm just going to give it a couple of more minutes before we get started. Um, and so let's just tune in for a minute and connect in with our body, connect in with our heart, connect in with each other. And I'm feeling like there's a lot of excitement energy coming into the earth. I think that we're seeing a lot of things happen in the external reality that we have been hoping for and praying for for a very long time. And so even though it comes with a lot of possibly chaos and difficulties, something happening is better than waiting for the decades that we might have been feeling like we have been waiting for so long for things to finally come to fruition in the physical reality. So there's a lot of excitement um, and for those of you who are finding this link, congratulations. <laughs> it's a maze to get here, and I'm so bummed because this information and this frequency I'm about to share today, it is absolutely incredible. And sometimes I just have to pause and recognize that this is only the beginning of my life in which I will be sharing these vibrations and this information and I'm just feeling that, you know, this, this energy that we're going to explore today, this information, this knowledge, is really the antidote to so much human suffering and so much of this restriction and limitation that humanity had experienced for so, so long. So I'm so happy that um, the ones that are here tuning in live um, yeah, witnessing this moment of my my human journey of, you know, whoo, holding these energies and being a channel for them. I'm just so honored because they're just so incredibly beautiful. <laughs> okay, so that's enough talking about, about what we're going to talk about. <laughs> um, 
Okay. So, we're going to start day two of our Dumbledore's Army workshop. And today, we're going to be talking about the second um, cluster of classes for the 13-month Galactic Shamanism Mentorship. And the three different sectors, they're split up into the different realms. And so for those of you who have been studying shamanism from different lineages, we understand that predominantly when we journey, there are three realms, the underworld, the middle world, and the upper world. And through the lens of a galactic star seed, the underworld is a little bit more complex and intense. And if you're watching a recording of this and you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend starting there because we're gonna be building on a lot of the concepts that we spoke about yesterday. And so it might be easier to assimilate and make more sense if you could just go to my YouTube channel and find Dumbledore's Army Starseed Galactivation Part One. So yesterday we were talking about the underworld and the underground military bases and ritual abuse and all of these things that have been systematically create, created to enslave humanity both physically, mentally, and spiritually. And as we move through the underworld, because we have all experienced that hellish version of reality where we eat you know, processed foods and you know, are being pummeled by pornographic images of sexuality on TV. And I think we've all gone through periods of our lives when we were immersed in that false matrix. So of course, exploring that underworld and the traumas and distortions that we have accrued when we're living inside of that reality, super important, the first part of our exploration. Well, today we're moving into an exploration of the middle world. And traditionally, when we talk about the middle world, we're really referring to regular life or the mundane reality. But in actuality, when we begin to look at this through the galactic lens, there's actually no such thing as a mundane world. And the mundane world, void of magic, void of life, void of sacredness, is actually a creation of the false matrix. And so here we have to rewire our entire relationship with the middle world or the mundane world altogether because there's no such thing as mundane and everything is actually full of magic. And so we talk about how we can reprogram and heal and restore our energy body to function in a way that it was created and it was meant to. And that is to say, humans are meant to be able to communicate with our body telepathically. We're supposed to be able to communicate with the earth and with water and with trees and with animals and with each other telepathically. This is how our bodies were meant to, um, were created and meant how our bodies are meant to experience life in a physical body. And when I first say that, it might, might sound absurd if these concepts are kind of new to you. But if you're somebody who has been waking up to these glimmers of magic for a long time in your own path, then you know that I'm just speaking um, of the truth that we're returning to nature consciousness. And so in our exploration of the middle world, we're not really talking about many things that are mundane because we're really getting back to experiencing our vessel as, as it was meant. So again, returning to nature consciousness out of the false matrix consciousness. And so I'm just going to jump into a different discussion because in the end, these are going to weave together. Okay. <laughs> So we call this program the Galactic Shamanism Mentorship. And one thing I like to repeat over and over again is that this is really not a certification where after this class, you're going to be able to, you know, call yourself a shaman and offer shamanic healing services. That might be what happens. Um, but because I feel that in the new earth and the new paradigm, shamanism is a very individual journey between and I'm human, so I don't have the power to tell you what you can or cannot do. That's literally out of my role. <laughs> so all I can do is tell you how I feel an aligned shamanic healer operates. 
and how you operate then is entirely up to how you're able to lead yourself and how you're able to be honest and be humble and connect to your own higher self. And so in the video introduction, um, I've spoken about all these different shamanic initiations that I have um, lived through. And the biggest one that opened the portal for me to start working with others is that one morning, my friend from Australia uh, sent me this code and a song. And she said that this is a galactic um, shamanism activation. And of course, I've been going through all of my trainings and my initiations with different plants and teachers all over the place. And so when I saw this code, I already knew that it was the universe confirming the path that I was on. And so she said I was meant to tattoo this on my arm. And that day I went to visit my friend. And when she opened the door, she introduced me to her Lakota medicine woman and her friend, um, this Lakota medicine woman, her medicine was stick and poke tattoo. And so you see this one day, my friend has sent me this code and I literally walked into this woman who carried this medicine. And when we met, you know, it was a lot of energy, a lot of tingles. And we decided there was medicine for us to trade. And so she poked this tattoo on me very ceremonially in this sacred space. And the whole time we were having crazy shivers and we both felt that my ancestors and the great spirit were sharing with me that it was now time for me to share my medicine and teach these um, this knowledge that I have gained and remembered from past lives and from my ancestors. And so this was a very um, clear message, okay? And this is important because as we were talking about yesterday, there's not specific teachers for the Starseed Galactic Shaman because we're bringing in new skills. We're bringing in new frequencies and new ways of embodiment that really hasn't existed on the earth maybe for a long time, maybe ever. And so it's difficult for us to find, you know, a teacher that would grade us and tell us when we're ready to perform and operate in certain ways. And in the new paradigm anyway, so here it is, in the new paradigm anyway, um, our, <laughs> in the new paradigm, our, um, our journey, is self-led and it's all about how we can learn to follow spirit and be humble and recognize that we have a place in our in our journey and that we're on this journey um, without rushing without feeling like we need to prove anything so all of those things are actually healings of our energy system and if we perform those healings if we focus on that right instead of focusing on what we're becoming like oh i'm becoming a galactic shaman that wasn't ever anything that I focused on. It's like my guys would come in and just say, this is what's happening. And I would say, oh, wow, that's amazing. I'm so honored. This is so exciting. And then I stopped thinking about it. It wasn't something that, you know, I constantly thought about that I was becoming like, oh, yeah, this is going to happen. So great. Actually, I never really thought about it, except the moments when the galactics bring it up. And then there's moments that are being initiated, right? And I feel that it's important for me to speak about this openly because there is a lot of prejudice, there's a lot of misunderstandings. I mean, the shamanic world on the earth, it is messy, right? There's so many people that are abusing their powers. And especially, you know, I've heard stories of shamans sexually abusing people in ceremony. These are things that are like, you know, completely weird and odd to me. And I don't understand how these people could be in the position they are without the integrity because to me, it's not even possible to wield power without that alignment. And so all of that is to explain that the second section of our mystery school, it's all about cultivating our essence. And I believe that the most important thing for a shaman to embody is this true, deep reverence and love for creation and life itself. Because out of that respect and that reverence and that delight and that curiosity opens up our heart channel to telepathically communicate with nature and our spirit guides and great spirit itself. And only from that place of purity can we truly function as a pure channel. And so I believe that for the second chunk of our time, 
if we focused on cultivating the essence and the purity, that this will greatly amplify your power and your ability to heal because it will be true, honest, humble presence that will open up the channel for these higher energies to come through. Because as we said yesterday, being a shaman means that you're accessing other dimensions and higher realities for the purpose of healing and soul evolution. And I've come to find that some people think that shamanism also is a way to gain power. And I think that that's completely weird. And so I want to make sure that we're cultivating the right um, traits, the right personality, the right um, frequencies of essence so that we become true healers, true channels, true shamans. So in this second period in our mentorship, we're working with the frequency of aliveness. So through that connecting with um, the frequency of what it is to be alive, we're discarding all the falsehoods of what being alive is. And so here we have the programming around fear and scarcity, but super specifically, the understanding of sexual energy. And we talked a lot about sexual energy yesterday, but this is a new, deeper level of sensing that in our body. And so we're really going to talk about this in detail. So first of all, I want to say that we are composed of masculine and feminine energy. And in the current New Age teachings, there's a lot of separation of those things. They like to say feminine energy is like these things and masculine energy is like these things. And if you're a woman, then you should be gentle and kind and peaceful and loving and creative. And if you're a man, then you should be strong. And this is actually the original mistake. And in a little bit, we're gonna discover why that split was crucial in the control humanity because we will all be fragmented and fragmented beings are traumatized are not completely there are way easier to control than beings that are fully present in our bodies as a whole divine being right there's no way for anyone to enslave me in the current state that i am at least mind control wise i guess if somebody showed up here and just threw me in burlap sack like that would be totally different but there's no way for my mind to be mind controlled at this point because a lot of my soul is inside my body and I've come into wholeness. And so my ancestors showed me this image of the yin yang. And what I saw was that the teaching is that the masculine is within the feminine and the feminine is within the masculine, meaning that while there are two energies working together in creation, they can never actually be separate from each other. And just because you're a male body person doesn't actually mean that you only have masculine energy. Actually, having a male body and having a female body are not really different except the anatomy. And the anatomy actually makes a huge difference, but it's not really as far as the balance of the masculine and feminine energy. So what I'm talking about is that, say for example, um, we are in a still meditation. And it seems like we're in the yin energy. But in that yin, our heart is still pumping the blood through our veins and the alive energy, we're still alive. And so within that stillness of our meditation, the masculine energy is still present. And so let's do a different example. When we get into a super inspired state and we want to just create something, when there is imbalance in our energy system, and I know that this is resonant with a lot of people who like, you want to write a book, you want to make a course, you want to start your business, you want to you know, start this new hobby, and you have all these great ideas and they're so fantastic, but when it comes to the physical reality, you just have such a hard time pooping it out and making it happen. And so the reason is that there's an imbalance or certain blockage in the energy channels. And usually the imbalance is that you have either too much feminine energy is running in, in the system or that the masculine energy 
or one of them it has wounds and traumas and distortions, so is not able to function properly. Um, this is quite a massive download that's coming in, so I kind of have to jump around, but it's all going to tie together in the end. And honestly, for the last two hours, I've just been like melting in this amazing, orgasmic, and creational energy because, I mean, it's like humanity remembering what being alive really feels like. That's what it felt like in my body. So um, I understand that this energy is radiating, coming in through the sun. I was looking at the sun through my window and I was like, holy crap, that's a lot of frequencies. Okay? My body was just scintillating. It was so um, incredible. And so we're talking about sexual energy. We have, I think, three classes in the second chunk devoted to different aspects of sexual energy because it's so important. Um, the reason for that is that in the shamanic paths I've seen on the planet, a lot of energy has gone into suppressing sexual energy, just like Christianity and other different old paradigm religions. And this cannot work because our sexual energy is literally creation energy. It's literally universal creative energy. So for us to sever ourselves from that is literally us cutting ourselves away from the organic matrix and placing ourselves in the false matrix. And clearly that is why these religions are created in this way and why sexuality is so distorted in our society. Because when this energy is running correctly, it is our full acceptance of being in the body. It is our recognition that these bodies are gifts. These bodies are miracles that Source has been creating for billions of years for ourselves so that we can experience being alive. And for the person that's just waking up, whose life has been really difficult and full of pain and everything, this might be ridiculous to hear, but... When we think about heaven on earth, life as it was originally intended, life feels, feels sensual, feels, <laughs> running out of words. Um, I'm glad that, you know, these things are transmissions and hopefully you're feeling it. But I did write down some words because it is hard to describe these things. <laughs> so the, the feeling that was coming through was that the body is a bioelectric, magnetic, orgasmic, alive being, entity. And so what it feels like is that you can actually tune into all of the electrons and the bubbles. And when we're fully alive, we can feel our nervous system expanding instead of contracting in pain. Okay? And I know that this is our natural state and what we deserve to experience because when we think about bringing new life into the world, right, sexuality, physical sexuality, it is a thing that is pleasurable. And I know that that, even that has been hijacked <laughs> often in our society, but ultimately the true sacred sexual union it is something that is full of pleasure. And so we know that cosmic energy creates pleasure in our body because we experience, that's how we experience life in these physical bodies. And so body feels delight. Life is pleasurable. And if that is not how we feel, that's okay. okay? Because these bodies have gone through a lot and it's taken a long time for this body to go through the different levels of healing that is needed. As I was saying yesterday, I have been drugged raped and I have gone through just a lot of different things, being homeless, not having any food, you know, starving on the side of the street, all those things this physical body has experienced and it has recovered from to now um, relearn what is the truth of its life. And that is to experience this delightful energy that first, you know, a lot of people, when they first experience sexuality, they think that, you know, they have to have sex or they have to find a partner. 
But really, that's actually the effects of our sexual energy being stuck or blocked in our lower chakras. And our society does a really good job at mind controlling our understanding of sex to confine it to our sexual organs. When we live in freedom, when our energy body is activated, when we're in a sovereign creator state, energy actually moves freely through our body. And so when that sexual energy activates, it doesn't get stuck in a lower body and then has to be an energy that needs to be expressed through sexual intercourse, but it actually moves through the entire body and brings bliss and pleasure to the entire body and reminds the body how amazing it is to be alive. And this is a natural process of the human body. This is how we're meant to feel. And so now it becomes very clear as to why so many people in our culture have mental illness and are depressed. Because we've lost touch with that connection to life energy itself. And so it's really important to cultivate that connection to life and that fluidity of experience in our own body because only through embodying these frequencies can we truly assist other people in the level of healing that this planet truly needs. And if we're talking about creating a whole new healthcare system based on the new paradigm understandings of energy and wholeness, then only through experiencing that level of multidimensionality in our own body can we truly say we're ready to become a shamanic healer that will hold space for other people? And not only that, but we really need to get to as complex and as deep of our exploration as possible because, again, humanity needs a lot of support, right? Just think about how far away we are from nature consciousness where we can communicate with our organs and release any distortion and pressure before it becomes a disease, which means that we don't really ever have to experience disease at all if we were all scintillating with divine life energy all the time. Extraordinary, right? I can't even believe that I have to say that out loud because this is just reality. And so, um, Restoring our reverence and respect for creation, this is a natural process. Like in the old paradigm, the teachers will say, you have to be humble. You have to be more of this. And it's actually impossible to follow their instructions because in order to be in integrity, those energies need to be experienced organically from the inside out. So if somebody just comes over here and says, you have to be humble, it's not really something you can just immediately start to do if that's not something that you've experienced. It's like if that frequency didn't exist inside, how are you supposed to just muster it up, right? So you can try to do certain things like be less confident. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get these distortions that actually take away your healthy sense of self or your healthy ego. So I believe that the cultivation, the cultivation, of our reverence and respect for life itself is a great place to begin because all we have to do is meditate with our heart on the complexity and the beauty and the magnificence of everything. And then we can't help but to be humbled by it all, not, that, not in a way that belittles us, but in a way that accepts and creates warmth inside of ourselves to know that we are a part of this magnificent creation that has so much complexity and beauty inside of it. And so, see, instead of then forcing the correct things, we're actually nourishing and cultivating them from inside. And this is how you actually, you know, grow and cultivate and evolve yourself instead of, you know, being reprimanded into something like in the old paradigm teachings. So, I have in my notes here, it says, aliveness is the secret sauce. <laughs> but at the moment, I can't really remember why I wrote that there, because it's just like on the side of the paper. <laughs> so <laughs> aliveness is the secret sauce. <laughs> and if I were to just extrapolate what that might mean, 
is that if we begin to see the world through the lens of everything being alive, of this scintillating, conscious, divine energy moving through everything, is the secret sauce to shamanism because we immediately have respect. You know, we don't just go up to a tree that can help us you know, heal our friend and say, hey, I force you to heal my friend or I'm commanding you to help me. No, we would go up to this being and say, you know, I am here in equalship and I am approaching you with love and respect. And I was wondering if you could help me out with this thing, right? So clearly the more respect and the more reverence we have for creation, this is really a huge secret here, okay? This is opening up our heart, which is strengthening up our field, which is the true way for us to acquire power. All these people that are trying to get power from the solar plexus, they're about to get a rude awakening because the false paradigm structure of reality is falling apart. And so that equation is no longer going to work. And so, um, let's see. So if you, sorry, I just, if you begin to cultivate this reverence inside of a heart, you will soon find that your psychic abilities begin to strengthen because everything in the universe desires to communicate with you because you're in a vibration of respect and of openness and of curiosity. And so the universe, the divine, it wants to open up to you because you're in the right vibration to receive. And of course, you know, this chips away. In the spiritual community, there's a lot of talk about this ego, how the ego is bad. It keeps you from ascending. You have to remove it. You have to kill it. And this is super scary to all of my inner children because we understand that ego is just a part of us. The angels didn't create a sense of self just so that we can call it bad and send it to hell. <laughs> we created an ego because this is how we experience individuality. This is how we experience our sense of self. And this is actually what adds complexity and adds personality and adds flavor to the universe. The universe wants you to have a self. It wants you to experience yourself as the most magnificent and beautiful and magical being ever, but not in the fake way, you know, not in the way where you only feel beautiful if you plaster your face with a bunch of stuff, or you only feel beautiful if you wear $100 shirts, or if you only feel something that happens that was external to you, right? These are internal, true feelings that we feel with our entire body, that we are a worthy child of the universe that created all this magic for me to experience. This is a legitimate feeling that I'm feeling with my whole body that I just want to move my body and start expressing that. So our ego is actually our sense of self. And we have to focus on healing and restoring all the ways that sense of self has been attacked by the false matrix. And everything in the false matrix is going after your poor ego because it wants to manipulate that part of you to benefit it in some way. So it tries to tell your ego that you're not good enough unless you're a certain thing, that you're not pretty enough unless you're a certain other thing. And so after when we come out of the false matrix, we must spend a long time restructuring our sense of self because no thing in our old reality has actually shown us what a healthy sense of self looks like. And in fact, the whole reality, including the false religions, have all just been attacking our sense of self so that we're weak, we're uncertain of ourselves, we're insecure. We can't um, be worthy enough to acquire the funding and the resources that we need to actually be strong and do our work on the earth. So this is something I find a lot in our spiritual community is that we hate money. We think we don't deserve it, you know? We think that we're not um, worthy of it and that we're not fancy enough to have it. When in actuality, we need to start reformatting how we feel and how we see ourselves, you know, restructuring our true sense of self. So now I want to go into talking about 
the body. And the Taoist way of engaging in the universe. Oh, and now I'm remembering why I wrote of aliveness is the secret sauce. Is this? I was thinking about our modern reality and how we have made so many technological advancements, but we still live in a society where people don't know if souls are real. <laughs> and if things are it's like, oh, we're mechanical, but what is this thing that make us alive? What is it? And they haven't discovered how aliveness, how consciousness incarnates into physical vessels. We haven't figured that out yet. And the reason is because they're, not, they're no longer approaching science through the perspective of a Taoist. So I understand that the ancient Taoists were just beings that were super curious about life itself, about existence. Because they're like, wow, I have this body, I get to experience, and how is it that all of this can happen? And what is this magnificently complex vessel that I'm in? What is it? So out of that curiosity, they spent a long, long time meditating, being with the body, communicating with the body, in order to figure out that there's a lot more to what the body can be and can experience than what, you know, Western scientific science has scientific science, <laughs> what they have discovered, because they're simply not addressing and they're not approaching the reality with that reverence, right? They're not um, separate from how reality works, just as we were talking about earlier. With that curiosity and with that reverence, the universe opens up to us and we get to understand. And this is what happens in the higher realms as well. When we were talking yesterday about how angels are these highly advanced intellectual beings who love the reality and love the universe so much that this curiosity and this love open up the possibility for us to understand how the universe truly works. And so you can see how there's a correlation between my angelic lineage and this ancient Taoist lineage and how they both are one and the same, as above, so below. And so the Taoist discovered through curiosity and love of life, and they found the secret sauce. And so they developed Qigong. And what I'm about to share with you are teachings that I have directly received from my ancestors. They're not things that I've read in books. I don't even know if these things are out there somewhere, but they probably are. <laughs> um, so it's the teachings of the three Dantians. The three Dantians are really our centers of creation. They're the components of our creator essence. We talk about the anatomy, the metaphysical anatomy of our creatorship. So legitimately creation happens through our three centers. And a lot of people are talking about the law of manifestation, but without understanding of the three creational centers, all of those teachings are dabbling with sideways magic that you might not want to dabble in, or they just don't work for you. Or they work for you, but they come with consequences, right? It's because they don't teach the complete teachings of how to be a creator being in the entire vessel. They're just working with one center. So the three major Dantians in our energy body, according to the Taoists, are the higher Dantian, middle Dantian, and the lower Dantian, which is our womb and our sexual organs. So I say that this is the three creational stargates because... When we think of something, or when we receive divine inspiration, when we have a dream, or when we use our imagination to figure out what we would like to create, this is what I call a cosmic sperm. <laughs> so when the cosmic sperm comes into our vessel, it comes in through the gate of the heart. And in the gate of the heart is where we figure out our motivation. So the cosmic sperm comes into our mind and it's like, I want a fancy sports car. And it comes down to our heart and our heart is like, well, I want that because it would make me feel better about myself. Then girls would like me. Then I would probably be able to blah, 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 right? Then we're like, okay, we recognize that our motivation is not of service to all. It's actually quite a selfish reason. <laughs> so at that point, we can throw out the sperm and say, no, we are not allowing the sperm into our womb. And we're not going to gestate that through our creative energy. <laughs> So another 
cosmic experiment comes in and the idea is say, I'm going to create this course, this mentorship. I want to create the space for as cheap as possible that will give people the space to become themselves, activate their superpowers, to feel so good in their bodies that they're feeling like they're superheroes and they can do anything, right? And it comes down into my heart and the motivation that love just sparks into my heart. I'm like, yes, I want everyone to be so alive in their bodies. I want them to not only be healed, but experiencing themselves as a creator who is here to make a massive difference and bring all of this healing into the world. And so when that motivation went through the heart and got the green check, it moved out and the sexual energy then activates and pushes me or pulls me into action. And so that those are just physical examples, okay? The important thing to realize is that our physical body and our energy body are directly in the field of the physical reality, meaning the particles that are in this couch that I'm sitting on, and the particles that are in that tree, and the particles that are in my body, they're in one field, one unified field. So when we say that humans are creator beings, consciousness energy is coming through our vessel. And even if it's not a specific creation, it could be an energy, right? It could be an idea. It could be a way of being. When the frequencies flow through our vessels, it literally shifts the fabric of reality itself. And so this level of awareness is important to integrate in the role of a healer and a shaman because you realize then that there are a lot of things that can occur in the subtle realm. And there's a lot of levels for the body to experience reality. And so you can, only when you have clicked in, clicked in meaning you feel that energy is moving freely through the vessel into the reality. And this is another dimension of moving back into Gaia consciousness is that in the false matrix, we think that we're these singular separate things that are separate from other things. You know, I touch this computer, is other. But in that level of consciousness, you can only do so much as a healer um, because so much more power that comes in when you're actually, you've raised and expanded your consciousness to a place where you're literally in a unified field of realms. And I think a lot of beings will call this fifth or sixth or seventh density consciousness, whatever you want to call it. It's really just a state of being. And so in the second um, chapter of our mentorship, I'm going to be channeling these energies so that we're really experiencing this level of connectivity with life itself. Because again, I feel like this is actually the key to being an aligned healer, to be a aligned shaman. Because when you are in resonance, when you're open to the oneness of life, there is no aspect of self, there's no possibility for you to abuse that power. There's no possibility for you to do harm with that power. And this is really important, really, really important. Because we just don't have time for those games. <laughs> Humanity need us and they need us now. And I think all the beings that are here that are vibrating with my energy, you know, it's not, not time for people to doubt each other either. You know, I see sometimes people on the internet, they're like, how come that person gets to call themselves a shaman? Like, who the heck do they think you are? Isn't that cultural appropriation? And in the same way, I feel it's funny because these are usually people that have no connection to the shamanic reality whatsoever, have not gone through any initiations, and yet they feel like they have the rights to decide who is a shaman or not. And so in this journey, that is between you and the great spirit. So then what we need to do is deeply cultivate that sense of connectivity with life itself. Because the life that's pulsating through all things, that is the energy of great spirit. You know, that wholeness, that network of consciousness. 
And so really these teachings are quite deep because it's not just about, you know, becoming something. We're really talking about your individual journey and it has to start there. This isn't about some version of you that you're going to become or some career that you're going to have or really communicating with the version of you that's sitting here right now and all the energies that exist inside of your body and all the parts and all the inner children and all the guides and all the higher selves in the composite, in the state that you are right now. And we're working with that and cultivating these incredibly important frequencies through this knowledge, through this wisdom, so that you can create enough stability and maturity to actually hold the power that it takes to be a shamanic healer. And so I encourage everyone to follow that path. I encourage everyone to explore their power because ultimately it will lead to a very deep internal journey of healing and growing. And that is always worth it. And even if you don't become a shaman at all, you know, it's so worth it to cultivate these parts ourselves. So we talk a lot about how, you know, I think in one of the classes is called the heart, the sexual energy and the heart. And is this frequency of energy where we've pulled the sexual energy out of the root and sacral and has been pulled into the body and now it feels like it's this nourishing life force. And a lot of times, you know, clients will be experiencing disease because there's a lack of energy. It's actually a lack of electrons. And so in this way, you can become kind of an electron donor because you're calling in cosmic energy and pulling, putting it where it's needed because usually the body can heal if it had the resources, the energy to do what it needed to do. And so um, we want to talk about the mastery of this energy because it's really an important component <laughs> of being able to channel and heal, but it has to be so aligned. It has to have been pulled out of that place where it's separate from the divine. And that's why we have to do quite a few transmissions on that because again our sexual energy is just the one that's been most distorted in our culture because our power of creation was the one that was being stolen from us and so in the healing the restoration of true sexuality there's nothing more important than it and it has very little to do with actual sex <laughs> Of course, once you have activated and aligned the sexual energy and have liberated into the rest of your somatic body where it belongs, because <laughs> sexual energy is how we experience cosmic energy and how our physical body is nourished by life force. Of course, they want to choke us of that life force, right? So first, we're removing that weirdness around sexual energy, that distortion, that degradation, that perversion of sexual energy, where we're beginning to just recognize that it's literally just life force, pure, raw, cosmic, divine life force energy. And we liberate it from its cage of the lower chakras and the trauma. And now we're finally nourishing our physical body with this life force energy. So once you're in that state and you meet another person who's in that state and you build that energy together, it's extraordinary and you can probably create a whole new planet with it but that's not even what we're talking about right you can liberate this energy inside of yourself and experience this energy inside of yourself and move that energy through your body to create reality as we're merging with the field of reality itself and that is actually true tantra that is what tantra truly is it is a love making process with the fabric of reality itself to experience our true creatorship. <laughs> and that's really deep stuff, guys. That's like the deepest stuff. And when you really think about that, I know that you know this might you might need to listen to this a couple of times for that to really land. It's taken me many years of really rewiring because we've been taught literally the opposite. And again makes sense that we've been taught the opposite because they want to take away 
our greatest power, our greatest bliss, our greatest human right to experience our body. So, <clears throat> um, you see that this mentorship is a lot deeper than just becoming a healer. It has so much more to do with us restoring the truth of ourself as a divine creator being to the most deep and somatic level, the most mechanical level. It's not that we sit around and meditate and hope for the best. We understand scientifically how this is going to work. And we do this as a scientist who's experimenting on herself to figure out the best way to restore and also figure out, you know, where those distortions exist because our inner exploration, when we begin to do this work on ourselves, and we truly realize that there's no separation and that we are actually inside of everything and we can experience the fabric of reality in that way, this is greatly um, exponentiating your ability to work on others um, at a distance or, or to work with their energy body because you recognize that you're both in the same field of the fabric of reality. And so this allows you to, um, this allows you more fluidity in your consciousness. And if you were to do, say, a hundred or a thousand hours of self healing, so at this point, I've probably done thousands of hours of this energy work on myself. And I guarantee you, that is why I am really good at doing it for other people now, because I really know how to move the energy inside because I experienced it, right? This is not something that we can say. It's like riding a bicycle. You can't just say, okay, you put one leg on this pedal and then you just do it. It's like a person has to actually do it to learn how to ride a, bi a bicycle. It's the same thing. So the greatest way to learn how to do energy healing on other people is to do it on yourself. And hopefully that gives you more motivation to do it if healing yourself hasn't been easy because it hasn't been easy to prioritize. So if you're more of a person that feels inspired by the idea of being able to support others in healing, this is great because now you can say, well, I'm going to go in and heal myself because this is really going to help me <laughs> help heal others. Um, just a funny backwards concept, but if it works, it works, right? It just kind of <laughs> trick our, our human self to do what is needed sometimes. So after thousands of hours of doing energy healing work inside, I figured out all these different densities and energies and connections of how to spin energy, how to allow energy to move in a way that um, not only allows it to become unstuck, but actually allows it to nourish places that are deficient of energy. All of these things I learned by going inside. And I'm saying that this is a way for you to build your library as well. Um, and it's for very many, many reasons. The self-healing is important because if you're not processing your own energy and you're not really aware of your own energy, you can very easily pick up a bunch of energy when you're doing sessions from other people. And this is creating healer burnout, is creating psychic attacks, what we perceive as implants, and you know, all sorts of things, simply because you haven't you're not caught up on your inner healing and things have cracks to get into. And this is really important because when you become an energy healer, you're not just responsible then for your own energy. So if you pick something up from one person and you do another session and you transfer the energy over, um, that is directly a thing that is on your karmic report because it's a cause and effect that you have created out of, you know, this um, irresponsibility. So it's actually not super hard to go inside and to work on yourself. And it's going to be great because it's going to accelerate your process in becoming a really good healer. You also realize that, you know, it's not personal. That is actually not you that's healing somebody. You're actually just holding space because you're actually communicating with their body to heal itself. You're simply coming out with creative solutions and suggestions for their bodies to heal itself. And you've learned those things through the process of experiencing them inside of your own body. And these are just levels of essence, right? It's the energy. It's how people 
can feel like they can trust you because you have moved through certain levels of maturation and being um, solid <laughs> in yourself. And I think that this is what separates, you know, kind of a healer with, with somebody who really knows what they're doing, who's really taking care of themselves, who's really pristine about energy, um, hygiene, because we have to choose to become responsible entirely for our own life, for us to um, reflect that vibration so others can heal. So when I have a client, because they feel this level of self-responsibility in me subconsciously, it actually helps the client take responsibility and heal themselves because I don't ever express the energy that I'm saving my client or that I'm healing something on them. You know, they know that I'm holding space and I'm reflecting the space and they often take their healing much more seriously that way, right? And I am so, I know that in the past, a lot of people were like, oh yeah, where am I from? And what past lives do I have? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, we're not here to entertain people, okay? We're here to redirect that attention back into what needs to be restored over and over and over and over again. And that process could be fun because at the end of that process, what you experience is this ultimate divine cosmic creator energy flowing through our bodies. That is what is motivating us. That is the candy. I, I don't know. I, never mind. <laughs> so, yes, cultivating our essence and our strength and our maturity is so important. It is the most important thing to becoming a channel because then your vessel is clear and you're seeing just the energy. And at this point, you know, my ability to see energy is so. I mean, I surprise myself because I can literally just like see what's going on in the energy and see how it's connected to all of the different um, other wounds. And I can tell you for sure that the only reason I know how to do that is because I did thousands of hours of healing on myself. And so I'm used to perceiving those levels of energy because I've done it for so long. And I know if anyone does that, they will be able to perceive energy to the level that I can because it's a natural ability that every human body has. We were just built this way. We have energy and we can access it. We have energy and we can experience it. We can talk to it. You know, we can have relationship and interact with it and direct it. And so throughout this year in the mentorship, we are going to be working on ourselves entirely because, again, that is what creates this wholeness that then becomes and creates the space for a true channel and a true space holder appealing. And what we're really aiming for is all of your bodies to be experiencing this level of connectivity with life itself because we become then literally an open channel where we can flow through that life into others <laughs> And that openness, that ability to allow life force through our body is the ultimate healing force. And it's truly just love, right? It's love, energy, it's appreciation, it's this acknowledgement of the sacredness and the magnificence and the delight of beauty and everything. So we cultivate that sacred connection and there's no thing in this energy field that is condescending. I feel that that is a distortion in the masculine patriarchal, um, patriarchal schools of shamanism where they're like, sit up straight and don't do that and don't eat pizza and <laughs> don't have sex. And it's like, <laughs> um, there's this innate fear Fear that God is going to punish you and fear that if you don't do something, then you're not going to be good enough. You're not going to be worthy of this cosmic energy that you're literally made of. And so I say, explore that. Open to that. 
connect to that and open your fluidity to experience and swim and dance inside of that, but with a humility and a respect and a reverence. So that is actually honest and it's coming from a true place instead of fear. Um, and so that I think about wraps up our day two of our Dumbledore's Army workshops. Um, I'm so happy that we are here sharing these vibrations because all I want is for all of humanity to recognize the incredible gift that they have to be inside of one of these physical vessels that are capable of so much intelligence and creativity and pleasure. And for all people to remember and to experience that inside their own bodies. And it has to begin with the healers. It has to begin with the shamans. It has to begin with the light workers, and that's you. So if you would like to have an accelerated process of getting in your body and experiencing that, just receiving this level of transmission, please join, join me in this mentorship. I mean, there is nothing out there like this. And my ancestors, my team have really um, told me to offer it at a price that is um, accessible for all people. Um, especially, you know, we're really going to be opening up our psychic ability. So it is important for you to have enough money for a place and food. And so we had to place it at this $89 a month to ensure safety and etc. So the link to that is below. And if you're not able to afford it, there is so much of my free content on this YouTube channel. I will continue to create more content and just here supporting all of us through this incredible transition. So if the mentorship is not available to you at this time, do continue to um, take these workshops, receive these transmissions if you feel like they're supportive and liberating and exciting for you. Um, and that is all for today. And I will see you all tomorrow, unless anyone has questions. <laughs> if you have a question, you can place them in the chat. So happy to be here with all of you. Thank you. Just gonna wait two more seconds. If you're typing out a question really quickly, I didn't wanna just <laughs> stop the stream. All right, bye everybody. See you tomorrow.